This year we were very gratified about winning the Grammy. Mike won his own Grammy the, and the record won a Grammy and we were really very surprised. Uh, the day of the Grammys, because we were very busy rehearsing and leaving for this tour, I personally didn't realize that that was the Grammy day and I was really shocked when somebody called up in the afternoon and said, hey, you won a couple of Grammys. And uh, so it was a big pleasure. And I'm sorry we couldn't have been in California to receive it.
Well, we came from a, a musical family. Uh, our father is a pianist, a jazz pianist, semi-professional, and uh, um, so he was very interested in, in music. There was always music in the house, and we all took up instruments at a very young age. Uh, uh, Randy began on trumpet, um, and I began on clarinet. And uh, my sister, our sister Emily, is a very fine pianist, and. Uh, we used to have jam sessions every night after dinner in our family. It was an interesting family. Do you want to add something? No, that pretty much says it all, but we also played other instruments. We all had a drum set that we traded off on, a set of vibes, an organ, all in the living room. So we had a nice little, and a bass, and we'd trade off. We had a nice little family band, and that was really the start of it all, of the Brecker family. Well, my father really was a trumpet fanatic, so when I was growing up, and Philadelphia also is a great trumpet town. There are many great, famous players that live there. Dizzy Gillespie, uh, Lee Morgan, Clifford Brown, when I was growing up, was in Wilmington, which is right across the river. So when I was in third grade, I went to a small public school, and they only had trumpets or clarinets that were available to play, so I naturally uh, gravitated to trumpet, because most, mostly because of my father. Well, by the time I uh, was interested in picking up an instrument, um, there were jam sessions at the house every weekend with friends of my father's, and um, a gentleman came over who was a very fine clarinetist, and I liked the way the clarinet looked, so I chose that. It's quite simple.
Well, we never intended to take a 10 or 11 year break. Um, we originally, uh, uh, in the 70s, we did six albums for Arista Records, and then when the contract was over, we decided to take a kind of a break and, and, and find out what it was like to play you know, alone, to, to pursue sort of careers on our own for a little while. Uh, and we got, both got very busy, and as time went by, uh, as early as 1985, we started talking about doing a reunion. Yeah, actually, we did one, a short one at a club uh, that we owned in New York City called 7th Avenue South. Um, and then we talked from time to time about putting it together, and it, it wasn't until 1992, until uh, we were both free and we, we were able to plan ahead enough to, to actually put this back together again. And originally, uh, it was only going to be one album and some short touring, but we ended up having such a good time that we did another album and we're back out on the road again. And uh, it's been good for us. It's, uh, it's been great to play together again and get to know each other. And uh, um, it's, these, are, this, these last few years I, I value for, for the rest of my life. I think what we do is uh, interpret what's happening currently in music and we try to offer our own interpretation along with our own interpretation of, of music that we've listened to in our travels throughout the world. So a lot of that comes into play, particularly music of certain parts of Africa and Brazil, along with interpreting American pop music within our own framework, to put it in a nutshell. Um, I think that was well put. Uh, you know, our music is, is instrumental music, so there's, uh, there's no um, social, social message per se, there are no words. Uh, it, we deal mostly with uh, color, colors and shapes and images. And, uh, um, you know, the bottom line is swing uh, in one way or another, uh, which is very important to us. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's very rhythmic music, and, and we like to to get that funk in there.
Well, the iwi uh, is an electronic wind-driven instrument. It's a, it's a wind-driven synthesizer that, uh, that is extremely expressive. And I play it because uh, it's capable of doing so much in an expressive way that it's become like uh, almost uh, as important to me as the, as the saxophone. And uh, uh, it's made by a Japanese company called Akai. And uh, um, they've done a very good job at putting it together and, and making it work. And uh, it's a valuable tool for orchestrating and for writing and for soloing on And I will be using it tonight. I think you have a song called Song for Bali. Yeah? Can you tell us about that song? Yeah. Uh, yes, the song was written and dedicated to an old friend of ours, the, the great trombonist Barry Rogers, who passed away a couple of years ago. And it includes some of his favorite lines that he used to play and I, I wrote them into a song and the whole composition is kind of through written but it begins with a, a long uh, unaccompanied part on iwi
on the bass, James Genus. George Whitty, George Whitty on keyboards. And on drums, Rodney, Rodney Holmes. Michael Brecker, tenor saxophone and Ewe. My name is Randy Brecker on trumpet. Well, my effects are, are mostly uh, either sound, process, sound processing, outboard equipment, or uh, guitar pedal effects that seem to lend themselves really well to trumpet for some reason. And uh, I've been using a lot of these effects for many years. I mean, I'm constantly updating. But I really feel, although I love, love playing acoustic music, but in a way my true voice sort of the way I feel most comfortable and be myself the most is within this context. So my minuscule, comp uh, my minuscule uh, contribution to the music is throughout this way. Uh, a song tonight that, you, that is on the program, <clears throat> that's a 
let's say, a representative song of the Brecker Brothers tonight. Can you tell us about that song? I suppose our trademark song, although it's an old one, is something that I wrote many years ago. And uh, I had a friend who, strangely enough, had a pet skunk, which I thought was kind of unusual. And so it was kind of unusual that I had a title before I had a tune. Uh, thought of a title called some uh, skunk funk, and I said, well, I'll have to write a tune that's kind of funky. And that tune seems to be still the one that people remember the most for some reason, and that people enjoy hearing. <laughs> 